In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation. And as always, it's great to be with all of you. And as always, we'd like to start off our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary has many wonderful titles. Mary is the Mother of God. Mary is the Mother of the Church. Mary is the Mother of each and every one of us. And also I pray the beautiful prayer of the Hail Holy Queen. We invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's invite Mary to come to be with us in our family conversation. And ask Mary to pray for us, that we will love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We say the prayer that Mary loves most, and that prayer is the Hail Mary. So, together. Hail Mary full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we'd like to lift our gaze to our spiritual director. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. And he has many different titles. Holy Spirit is the paraclete. Holy Spirit is also the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit <coughs> is also the sweet guest of the soul. Holy Spirit is our counselor. Our counselor as well as our consoler. And the Holy Spirit is our interior master or teacher. St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans that we really don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit Intercede with ineffable groans so that we can say, Abba, Father. So let's beg the Holy Spirit to come and to be with us. To enlighten our minds, to set our hearts on fire with the love of God. As we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful, by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise. 
and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Boniface, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, to my friends, the family that prays together, stays together. And the world at prayer is a world at peace. So after praying with you, I will be praying for all of you. Now pray for you in the greatest of all prayers. That prayer is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There's no greater prayer in the world than the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So I'd like to place you on the altar and offer these Specific intentions. First, I'd like to pray that all of us in this Perseverance family of ours would all be open to the grace and the workings of the Holy Spirit. We can pray as such. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. My second intention will be I'd like to pray for all of our families and family members for the conversion for the conversion for the sanctification and the salvation of all of our family members. Jesus says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Finally, I'd like to pray, as always, for those who will be dying sometime today, that they will be saved. Our Lord says very clearly, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world if he loses his soul? We pray that those who will be dying, <coughs> uh, 
sometime today, we'll be saved. I'd like to also pray for ourselves that we would we would obtain the grace of all graces. And the grace of all graces would be to die in the state of grace. The grace of all grace is to die in the state of grace. So I pray that we would live our lives always focusing upon God and the ultimate purpose of our life. The ultimate purpose of our life is to get to heaven. So my friends, it's great to be with all of you and as is always, there's a lot to cover in a relatively short span of time. I'd like to give you an overview of where we're at today. We're actually in the ninth week of ordinary time and June 5th the church celebrates the memorial of St. Boniface, bishop and martyr, who lived in the year 672 and died June 5th, 7054. And he's the great missionary that went from England to Germany to evangelize the Germans back 1,300 years ago. So we can talk briefly about this great missionary saint. His name is Saint Boniface. In the readings, my friends, To be praying more and more that we would have a real hunger for the Word of God, but a deeper understanding of the Word of God. Jesus says, man does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Over the past week, we've been reading through what we call the first two encyclicals. And that would be we've been reading through parts of the first letter of St. Peter and the second letter of St. Peter. So after that, the church offers us a reading for one of the pastoral letters that St. Paul wrote when he's actually in prison. It's called one of those captivity letters. And he's writing it to one of his spiritual sons. And his name is Timothy. Timothy is one of the spiritual sons of St. Paul as well as Titus. And Paul will write two letters to Timothy and another letter to Titus. This is a very this is a very endearing letter. Very endearing letter. It will offer you a at least one of the golden nuggets that the Word of God offers us. The letters of St. Paul are very rich indeed, and we, we should read them and meditate upon them, try to understand them, and of course try to put into practice the Word of God. Because Jesus says, not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my heavenly Father. <coughs>
the responsorial sum is taken from Psalm 123. And that is, to you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. You know, that antiphon, I think, is very helpful. Because, my friends, if we just focus upon what's going on in the world, what's going on with the wars, what's going on in our country, what's going on in the social milieu, we can easily become discouraged. So we want to live out this psalm. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. Beautiful prayer. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If God is with us, who can be against us? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my rock and my refuge. When I am weak, I am strong. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. And those consoling words of Jesus, his last words before he goes up to heaven. He says, Behold, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. So there we have it. Then the Gospel is the Sadducees who do not believe in the resurrection. They're trying to they're trying to trip our Lord up. He says if a man has a wife and he dies and They have seven of the brothers that die. Whose wife is he? It's somewhat of a stupid question. They're trying to trip the Lord up. And the Lord will respond to them, pointing out their foolishness. Our God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. So what I'd like to do, my friends, is... Um, that's kind of an overview of our program today. I'd like to then go back to the saint that we celebrate today. And I would like to talk especially about The call to be a missionary. The call to be a missionary. All of us are called to be missionaries. Now I'd like to, I'd like to mention the great missionary saints and then I'd like to speak about one of the greatest missionaries last century, John Paul II. We see in the first reading, St. Paul is, of course, after Christ, perhaps the greatest missionary that the church has ever had. And both St. Paul is in jail, and St. Boniface will actually end his life by being a martyr, dying for Christ. So I'd like to mention <coughs> a, a list 
a litany, a litany of missionaries. And perhaps Sophie, who's our secretary, can write down the different missionaries that we can really admire. So let's start with St. Paul. We find writing this letter to St. Timothy, St. Paul became, he became the missionary, he became the missionary to the Gentiles. That's right. There are many other titles to this great apostle and martyr. But Paul became the missionary to the Gentiles. <coughs> that the word of God was not limited simply to the Jewish people, but to the whole world. And that's why the word Catholic actually means coming from Greek kataholos. Catholic actually means universal. Let's take then, we'll give you a, a list of some of the great missionaries and I hope by our conversation this will motivate us, motivate us to become missionaries perhaps to get out of our comfort zone and to do all we can to spread the good news. Let's then take, let's move then from there to St. Patrick. St. Patrick. St. Patrick was born in Britain, but St. Patrick went on to become the great missionary to the Irish people. We celebrate his feast day every year on March 17th, usually in the season of Lent, two days before St. Joseph. But his love and influence is is universal. In the United States, there are many Irish priests that have come here to work and do missionary work. For example, Father Patrick Payton, the Rosary priest, lived most of his priests in the United States, but Father Patrick Payton was actually born in Ireland. Father McGivney, who founded the Knights of Columbus, also born in Ireland. So let's move so from St. Patrick, the patron of Ireland, to another missionary saint. Saint, we celebrate him the other day. Saint Augustine of Canterbury. Saint Augustine of Canterbury was a Benedictine monk that Pope Saint Gregory the Great sent on journey <coughs> with missionaries to England. So St. Augustine of Canterbury would be the missionary to the English people. 
It was actually an Italian, but sent by St. Gregory the Great to do missionary work in the country of England. It's interesting is St. Augustine, as well as St. Patrick, as well as St. Boniface, when they arrived, they try to bring monks and nuns and to establish monasteries, houses of prayer and penance, so that the missionary work would blossom and flourish and extend to the whole country. Then we arrive at the saint that we're celebrating today. And his name is Saint, saint Boniface. Saint Boniface, my friends. Saint Boniface went on to become the missionary saint of Germany. Of Germany. Even though St. Boniface, he was an Englishman, a brilliant English Benedictine monk, he felt the real desire to be a missionary. And the Holy Father wanted him to go to Germany, where the faith was already present, but it was basically dying and surrounded by a lot of superstition. And one of the most famous stories in the life of St. Boniface was that the German people had a great love for nature they attributed supernatural forces through elements in nature, especially in trees. So St. Bonaventure went to this oak tree that they basically were adoring an oak tree. So St. Bonaventure got an axe and he started to chop away at this, at the roots of this oak tree. And the people were convinced that the God would come and strike him dead. And Bonaventure kept cutting away until the tree, the oak tree, crashed to the ground. And he said to people, look, nothing happened to me. Because this is not God, it's just a creation of God. And as a result of this, they honor and respected Boniface all the more. And he took the wood from that tree to build a chapel. That's one of the most famous stories we have in the life of St. Boniface. <coughs> it's interesting because, my friends, we're talking a lot of themes. And we've arrived also in the Catechism of the Catholic Church where we're talking about the sins against the first commandment. We're talking about the sins against the first commandment. We've arrived at the number where we've been 
slow, going through it slowly, the sense of superstition. That's exactly what Boniface did. He arrived there and he had to eradicate and expel superstition. The tree is not God. The tree came into existence because of God. The tree is a creation of God. But you'll be surprised, my friends, how many people today attribute supernatural powers to things, to good luck charms, to amulets, to talismans. You'd be surprised. We go to these these little buildings that are present in all the little cities of Los Angeles, and they've got these called curanderos, adivinos, brocos, which they're inviting people to come in so that their hands can be read. They take out the tarot cards. They look into the crystal ball. They do what's called un Olympia. You'd be surprised how many practice of, of superstition are present in the big cities and not even the big cities. And as St. Thomas Aquinas points out, if we do not worship the one and true God, then we're going to end up by worshiping the false God. That's right. If we don't worship the true God, then we can worship the false God. So St. Bonaventure, he goes to Germany. He preaches for 35 years. He sets up churches. He catechizes. The Pope consecrates him as a bishop. He says of monasteries. Then he ends up his life in a place called Phrygia. And he's <coughs> confirming a lot of people and an angry mob rushes into the church and they kill Boniface as well as about a, a group of those he confirmed. Boniface was already in his late eight, early 80s. So Boniface was the missionary of Germany. He was a bishop, he was a preacher, but also he was a martyr. So that if you go to Mass today in honor of St. Boniface, you'll see the priest coming out in red. So I really felt, my friends, that it's important to talk about the whole missionary impulse. So thanks be to God that this great man Boniface was able to plant the Christian Catholic faith in Germany. Please pray for Germany because it's going through a lot of problems today with respect to understanding a proper doctrine. going through a lot of confusion today, Germany. A country that's very affluent, but there's a lot of confusion, especially about sexual identity, about the priesthood, so just a lot. There's a ball of confusion in Germany, so let's pray. Let's pray for Germany. And be thankful 
that we had one of the greatest theologians, popes in the Catholic Church, who just died about a year and a half ago, and his name was Pope Benedict XVI, also known as Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. Let's pray for Germany. I really love this topic, my friends. I love the topic of missionary. I feel that you're called to be missionaries. I feel that I'm called to be a missionary too. I really love the topic, don't you? It's a wonderful topic. Let's move to another. Let's talk about another missionary. Let's take, let's take Father Damien, let's take Father Damien, <coughs> there's the Saints Cosmos and Damien, but also there's the more modern Saint Damien of Molokai. Last name was Vister. But Saint Damien Saint Damien of Molokai. You can actually summarize his missionary work as being the missionary priest and saint. of the lepers. He willingly offered himself to go to the island of Molokai where the lepers were basically thrown to die and to rot in their leprosy. Marginalized. He went there and showed them great love and great concern and great compassion and great tenderness. He worked day and night building churches and hospitals and schools and preaching and teaching, catechizing, blessing marriages, hearing confessions celebrating the Mass, giving himself totally for the love of the lepers like our Lord. And <clears throat> one day when he was preaching, he said, we the lepers, because he recognized that he had contracted leprosy. And then you can write down, Sophie, after St. Damien died, there was another missionary that came to follow up, to follow up on the work of Father Damien, and it was a nun, who was actually born in Germany, traveled to New York, Syracuse, New York. And then she went to follow up on the work of Father Damien. Her name was St. Marian, St. Marian Cope. K-O-P-E, St. Marian, St. Marian Cope. So Father Damien dies and St. Marian Cope came with a group of nuns to follow up on the work. Follow up on the work. The wonderful work that St. Damien of Zvistra Molokai did. <clears throat> We're really giving a good panorama, panoramic vision of the great 
missionary saints in the Catholic Church. Why do we take one that is very dear to us, where I am, I've been living for many years, and Sophie can write on St. Peter Chanel. St. Peter Chanel. St. Peter Chanel. St. Peter Chanel became the first, he became the first missionary saint of, you might write down, Oceania or the South Pacific. He was a French priest. He entered into the Society of Mary, or the Marists. St. Peter Chanel went on mission to an island called Futuna. His work was very difficult. And St. Peter Chanel said, in these circumstances, you have to be very holy. You have to be very holy. So after several years, the son of the chieftain was converted, and the chieftain got very angry, was fearful, that Peter Chanel would dominate the country by his religion and the king sent a group of thugs to surround his hut and they clubbed him to death. Then as a result of the shedding of his blood, as Tertullian says, the shedding of the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christian growth. The whole island was converted. The other islands, the other islands surrounding Futuna also, they were converted. Not too long ago, I was reading up on this saint and it said that this was the area in which Catholicism was flourishing most. This is maybe few decades ago. Peter Chanel lived about 140 years ago. And that brings us, my friends, to the present time. And if we look at the modern world today, see in the past century, without a doubt, two of the greatest, two of the greatest missionary, two of the greatest missionary <coughs> saints would be Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Saint Marie, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. <coughs> she became a universal missionary. But we'd have to say that Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who died in 1997,
is that she became the missionary, the missionary saint to work with the poorest of the poor. That's right. She would say that we have to see Christ in the distressing disguise of the poor. Those are the classical words of Mother Teresa, to be able to see Christ in the distressing disguise of the poor. Seeing Christ in the distressing disguise of the poor. But she would always say, first we have to see Christ in the Eucharistic presence. Starting off the day with the Mass and Holy Hour, seeing Christ in the, in the Eucharist, and then we can see Christ in the distressing disguise of the poor. <clears throat> And of course, and of course, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention who I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, the great Pope Saint John. Paul II, beyond a shadow of doubt, Pope John Paul II, without a doubt one of the greatest popes in the history of the world. A laundry would say, go in to go out. Fulton Sheen would say that a laundry, first come, then go. That's right. First come, then go. Come to be with Christ. Come to me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then the words of Jesus, his last words, go out to all the world. And teach them all that I taught you. And baptize them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Behold, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. So Pope John Paul II, he left us many writings. One of his encyclicals, encyclicals is actually on this topic that we've been developing the whole hour. And the name of this encyclical is Missio Redentoris. Missio Redentoris, which would be in English, for the mission, the mission, the mission of the Redeemer. The mission of the Redeemer would be to save all. So, my friend, John Paul II beckons all of us to strive to become modern missionaries. And I would challenge all of us because the biggest religious group, the biggest religious group in our country 
in Mexico, in the Philippines, in Europe, are Catholics, but they're non-practicing Catholics. I'll challenge all of you to make a concerted effort to try to bring back one fallen away Catholic back to the fold every month. Why not? Let's try to do it. So I hope that this talk has been helpful to all of you, motivating all of us, myself included, to be missionaries. Jesus said, go out to all the world, teach all that I taught you, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And behold, I will be with you always. until the end of the world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.